please welcome Vitaly Davidov. Yeah. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, thank you and welcome to our session today uh, regarding practical approach for lightweight threat modeling automation. Uh, who here knows uh, what threat modeling is? Maybe have heard about it. Okay. Great. Great. Anyway, uh, I will provide you a brief overview of, uh, of what is threat modeling, how we're running threat modeling exercise, uh, why it's so important to have these processes part of our development lifecycle. Uh, we will review the problems we have in the DevOps and Agile era, and I will provide you that solution to integrate this process in your uh, development lifecycle in CI CD pipeline. So we have a lot to cover. Uh, let's get started. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Vitaly Davidov. Um, I'm an application security domain lead at Citibank Innovation Lab. Uh, I've been a developer for many years, moved to AppSec field about six, seven years ago. I've been responsible for uh, secure SDLC process in HP Enterprise. Now it's MicroFocus company. So just a disclaimer, so this talk, uh, based on my experience running threat modeling for the last three, four years, not related to processes and tools we have in the Citibank. So before we uh, dive deeper into the processes, I just wanted to provide you the basic security terminology I'm using in my presentation, so we all will be uh, on the same line. So what is asset? Asset is something that provides the value to our business. In our case, it might be software code itself, our application, uh, all the data we have, like uh, user-related data, credit card information, etc. It's also related to the components we have, like web servers, application servers, databases, and so on. And the assets, it's something uh, we should protect against threats. So the threat uh, is a threat is a any kind of event which can damage our asset or our data. So it might be a threat of the unauthorized access to our assets and data, uh, assets are removing, threat of the uh, data manipulation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Vulnerability uh, is a kind of weakness we have inside our software which makes attack or exploit possible. Attack is actually the act of the damage. It might be part of the hacker's activity, malicious codes, malwares, uh, social engineering attack, like uh, phishing attacks, etc. cetera. Uh, up use case. I think you're all aware of what is the use case. It's actually the functionality of our software. Yeah, so we have, for example, use case uh, to transfer amount of money from account A to account B. So, but what if I, uh, instead of transferring $100, I will transfer minus $100 from my account to account B? What would be consequences? What do you think? I just add the minus and the sum transferring. Yeah. Okay, so actually it's a revert operation. So account B will charge and money transfer to my account, which is great, yes. But it's not something by design. So we call it abuse case or what can go wrong in our system. Countermeasures or security controls. Uh, it's uh, how we can protect our software. So maybe we need to implement something as part of our software code. Maybe we can use external uh, security controls like firewalls, uh, security gateways, etc. Uh, and the last one, the risk. Uh, so the um, role of application security and uh, in, um, information security in general is to reduce the risk we have that threat will take over uh, vulnerabilities we have and damage our asset. So we, in most cases, we just need to remove the number of vulnerabilities or their criticality. Uh, so here's just the visual representation of this uh, concept. So we have the owner, our business, we have the asset, provide the value to our owner, and we have threats, which may uh, abuse or damage our assets by exploit vulnerabilities we have in our software. But we can introduce countermeasures or security controls in order to uh, reduce the risk we have. So I think it's enough for security introduction and back to our presentation for now. So we have a software development lifecycle process. It's kind of sequence of steps uh, we should done in order to produce high quality software. Uh, it might be four steps uh, process, five, seven steps based on methodology we're using. In most cases we have design, implementation, verification and release phases. Uh, uh, a lot of methodologies exist and implementations in the market. Uh, for this model, like uh, Waterfall, Agile, RAD, and many others. So uh, who, uh, who using Waterfall here, for example? Waterfall, Agile. You heard about Agile? Okay, great. Some kind of uh, mixed solution, hybrid solution. Okay. So I'm not going to describe this process in detail. It's out of scope for now. But in order to reduce security risk, 
uh, we also need to implement security activities as part of this process. And uh, you can see here the examples of such processes like uh, security planning, threat modeling, secure design review, uh, security automation testing, release sign-off, and many, many others. So, and today we're going to talk about threat modeling. So what is threat modeling? Threat modeling is a structured uh, framework or methodology which provides us the way to identify potential threats and other use cases for our design. It also provides us the way to uh, define the countermeasures and uh, test scenarios, so how we're going to test our countermeasures. It also helps us to uh, prioritize the issues we have, what we, going, what we should fix and what's going not to be fixed because it's not so risky. That's a kind of very uh, important process. And again, a lot of methodologies exist. Uh, it's a five-step process from the Microsoft threat modeling. We have the Stride. It's a threat categorization framework. We will review it later. We have the PASTA. is most popular, I think, uh, for now. It's a process for attack simulation and threat analysis. It's a seven-step risk-centric approach. We have WAST for Agile. We have Stride. We have the very good uh, framework uh, from the microfocus, from synopsis, and many others. Again, I'm not going to, uh, to describe this uh, methodology for now. I just wanted to show you uh, how we're running threat modeling and why it's so important to have this process as part of our uh, development lifecycle. Actually, uh, when we do threat modeling, uh, we should provide the answers for these core questions. Question number one is what we are building, or in Agile, uh, what we are working on in this sprint or for this feature. It's kind of decomposition of our design. We uh, want to display all the components we have, what kind of data we have, how we transfer data from one place to another place, etc. The next question is what can go wrong? Yeah, yeah, so we need to identify potential threads and other use cases for our design. Uh, the next question, uh, what we are going to do about that? Countermeasures, so how we're going to protect our system, what we should implement, how. Uh, maybe we need external uh, security systems like firewalls, etc. And the last question is, uh, did we do a good enough job? It's about the process itself. So we want to see the reducing in number of incidents in production, uh, reducing the numbers of uh, uh, security, security defects, etc. Et uh, we will back to this question later. Uh, so the steps, the step number one in most cases, we want to create data flow diagram or DFDs. If you've never seen DFDs before, so here's an example. We want to visualize all our design and place components we have like web server, application server, uh, some legacy systems, for example. We also want to provide the uh, data transferring vector, so how the data moved from one place to another place. We also define the trusted zone. So maybe we have internal trusted zone, but uh, we totally uh, untrusted to the internet, and we have something in between, DMZ, one leg to untrusted internet and one to our internal zone. We need it in order to provide severity for our threats and for our issues. We also can create process flow diagram or PFDs <coughs> in order to understand the protocols we have, open ports, who can talk with whom in our design, etc. So the next step, <coughs> uh, we need to act as a hackers and try to uh, virtually attack our own system. So in most cases, we just should think like a hackers. And it's not so easy task because uh, we cannot just say, okay, you now start think like a hacker. Yes, it uh, doesn't work. So we need to incorporate some technique to start conversation, to start ask questions. And we can use <coughs> different approaches here. We can uh, create the predefined a questionnaire and go through this, uh, this questionnaire and ask questions about authentication, authorization, session management, etc. We can use Stride uh, framework from the Microsoft. It's an acronym for thread uh, <coughs> pro, uh, spoofing, uh, tampering, liquidation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. This is a thread categorization framework, so we can use the properties of each category and ask questions about authentication, integrity, non-liquidation, confidentiality, etc. So the back to our design, for example, when we have requests coming from the user browser or user client, we can ask 
for example, if I can intercept this request and see all the data, username and password information, for example, tokens, and so on. Maybe I can uh, deny the availability of the web server, yes, and uh, just think about uh, services like Amazon, Facebook, etc. And maybe I can uh, access our credentials store without authentication, or maybe I can change uh, messages inside the uh, messaging bus, and so on, yeah? And as the next step, obvious, we need to find the countermeasures and think about, uh, for example, uh, I can incorporate a secure channel and use HTTPS protocol instead of HTTP, and I can introduce uh, a cluster for web servers in order to reduce availability problem, and I can um, integrate token-based authentication for our credential store, uh, certificate-based authentication for legacy system, and so on and so on. Okay, so uh, as an addition step, we also can provide the um, uh, test scenarios. So what should we test for our design? What kind of tests we should run? Like static analysis, dynamic analysis, composition analysis test, etc. So um, what the benefits or the output from this process? So the first of all, we have visual representation of our design. We have list of all components we have, what kind of data we have, where are we storing data, uh, how we transfer data from one place to another place. We have the list of uh, threads and abuse cases, and for every uh, thread we have also a list uh, of pointers to uh, countermeasures, so what, what should we implement in order to protect our system. We can use the output uh, from threat modeling as the uh, scope definition for manual penetration testing process, that kind of very important process, yeah? So, uh, what if we don't have threat modeling in place? Then we lean on intuitive security. It might be okay, but in some cases we can miss threads, we can set the wrong priority for our threads. Just to provide you the point, what do you think, what is the deadliest American animal? It might be snake, deer, dog, shark, a good one. Yes, it's a black. This is a white, uh, big white. Yeah, so it's a good. <coughs> so what do you think? Any guesses? Deadliest American animal. Humans, yeah. It's not in the list, yeah. <coughs> Sorry? Snake, someone? Snake, snake? Deer, okay. Shark, maybe dog. Oh yeah, this is, is all the old example, but it's still, uh, still works. So yeah, uh, so actually the, the uh, deadliest American animal is a deer by a uh, number of car incidents we have in the US. And the second place actually is the bees or wild bees or uh, wild wasps. It's, it was not on the list, yeah, so we missed this threat. And we can set the wrong priority for dog, for example, for snake. It marks as mar most dangerous, yes, but by, by mistake. So the same is accurate for security. Okay, when we're running threat modeling in our development lifecycle, uh, rule of thumb as early as possible during our development lifecycle process. I used to say that we need to start threat modeling um, during the design phase, but in Agile, uh, the borders are blurred between uh, design and implementation. So um, I would say we need to run threat modeling at any point during a feature onboarding process. Uh, we also can run threat modeling as the part of the post-mortem activity, yes, after incident has occurred, in order to understand why we miss threats, uh, maybe we need to change our methodology, ask different questions, yes, it's related to the last question we have about uh, did we do a good enough job. And we also can run threat modeling for existing system or for legacy system. So, uh, responsibility. So who is responsible for threat modeling for now? Uh, at, at, at this moment, uh, security specialists, they are totally responsible for this process because you should have a very good knowledge of how to attack system, how to find attack vectors, uh, what can go wrong in different frameworks. So no architects, no developers, even not security champions, they don't have this level of, uh, of knowledge. Uh, but we have the problem because security specialists, uh, in most cases, they don't scale enough. Yeah, so we have one security expert for 100, approximately 100 developers. So we don't have time to run threat modeling for every new feature we have, for any change we have in our system. So we want to shift 
at least part of this process to developers. And not just because they can save you time, but they also know the code much better than security specialists. But they are not security specialists, so we need to offer them different way to do that. So uh, common problems, um, so it's kind of, threat modeling takes a lot of time, yes, from the hours to days and weeks. So just think about it, we have sprint cycle for two weeks and we spend four or five days for threat modeling. So it's not suitable for agile development model in most cases. It's also uh, a very manual process, requires security specialists in place and a lot of the commands. So it's also not suitable for all kinds of continuous processes like pipelines. It's also poorly propagated to developers. Yeah, so uh, as a security specialist, we did threat modeling for specific features. Great, good job. So what now? We have a lot of documents, uh, diagrams, etc. So uh, now who, who gets to review all these documents? Developers for sure not. Yeah, so it's kind of useless of those documents. So as a result, uh, in most cases we just skip threat modeling or we, uh, we can do it partially only or we replace this process with a uh, security design review, but it's not the same. But so uh, it's kind of important threat modeling. So it's for the process. We want to have, uh, have it as part of our development life cycle, part of our CI CD pipeline. So what can we do? Actually DevOps can provide us the approach. One of the uh, key attribute of DevOps paradigm is an automation. Yeah, so we want to automate as much as possible from our development life cycle in order to reduce mean time to change, mean time to recovery, mean time to market. And we can um, automate it as a code. Yeah, so we have the script. We can provide some kind of recipes as a YAML files, for example, and scripts uh, go through these YAML files and automate the processes we have. So we have everything as a code for now. We have continuous integration as a code, infrastructure as a code, uh, the containers orchestration, etc., etc. And we also want to have security as the code in order to align these security processes and security steps uh, to the, our development lifecycle. So what would be uh, requirements from the threat modeling as a code and why it's lightweight? Yeah? So, so the first of all, we want to automate threat modeling process as much as possible and shift it to developers. We also uh, want to generate YAML file as an output and so then they can use it uh, in order to automate the different steps, uh, security steps in our development lifecycle. We want to run threat modeling for every new feature we have and for any change we have and uh, manage the versions for this YAML file. But um, so we can automate something we know, we cannot automate something we don't know. And we learned that um, we can predict threats and abuse cases um, approximately about 75-80% of uh, web applications, mobile applications, uh, database applications. And this part is going to be the automated part or known part and we can shift it to developers. So uh, I will provide you an example. Let's say we have new feature. Uh, we have web application and we have backend service. We want to upload zip file to our back backend service, uh, unzip it, uh, encrypt content and store to the database. Okay, so the new new feature. So let's say, uh, let's see what we have. File uploading, it's something we can predict. We can, so we, we have the list of threads for this flow. We can use OWASP uh, documents, OWASP SVS, for example, version four. Uh, we have used uh, our NIST documents, etc., etc. A lot of resources describe this flow and what can go wrong in this flow. Uh, so the next one, unzip operation. Again, I think you're all aware of zip slip vulnerability discovered by Sneak in 2018, I think. It's all about the code execution during unzip operation, etc. It's also something we can predict. Uh, encryption, encryption, decryption. So again, the key management and access to file system during the encryption operation and so on. Uh, and the last flow for the database, again, so all the database connectivity threads uh, and the thread for storing binaries uh, inside the database, we can predict it. So yes, we have the new feature, but we can cover about more than 80% of threads and abuse cases for these new features. 
So, and this part going to be the known part or automated part. We can shift it to developers. But we always have new technology or framework that we, uh, we cannot automate. Yeah? Uh, for example, we want to use new type of database. We, we want to use green databases uh, or biological type of databases. For example, we can use Mushroom's root system, Mycelia, as a data storage. So it's a new kind of database. We cannot predict threats. Uh, so we need to do manual research. Uh, we need to call external experts, etc., etc. But now we can do that. So we, we have the time to do that. It's not an issue anymore because we automated the most part of our flows. It's not the, not the timing issue more. So that's why we call it just an after threat modeling or light like threat modeling. So uh, about the automation, uh, automation part. So the step number one, uh, we need to generate patterns or templates for every known flows we have in our system. So here you can see an example in a JSON format. You can use any other structured uh, documents like XML, Excel, or whatever. So I prefer uh, JSON. So you have the name of the flow, for example, username, uh, password authentication, and we have list of threads. Yeah? For each thread, we have list of uh, uh, countermeasures, and we have list of tests, etc., etc. So we have the all information we need for this specific flow. Uh, it's not minor how, yes. Uh, if you need more information about how to build templates, uh, I uh, strongly recommend you to review uh, this talk uh, provided by Stefan De Vries in uh, AppSec 2016 about threat modeling with architectural risk patterns. Very good uh, explanation of what is pattern, how to build pattern, etc. So this step, it's still under security experts' uh, responsibility. It's kind of one one-time effort. It's not really, but yeah. Uh, so we can create it and use it. You can actually, uh, you don't need to create your own patterns. Yes, you can use open source or free uh, libraries for this, or you can use commercial tools to provide this, uh, this pattern. So, but now uh, we need select patterns for our specific uh, feature of flows. And this uh, part we can now shift to developers. We can provide them different way to do this. Uh, for example, questionnaire. They just need to select the uh, uh, correct answer and we can pick pattern from our list or design diagrams, the same. Then we drag and drop components or create uh, communications. Uh, we automatically select patterns. You can see on the right side right here. Uh, one note about the questionnaire. Uh, if you create your own questions, or update, customize existing questionnaire, please don't use uh, security uh, technology as part of your questions. Because if you're asking about dictionary attack, uh, from the developer's point of view, it might be something like that. Yeah? So uh, be aware of use and use the developer's language and uh, don't ask security related. So the next one, we have the list of patterns. We select all the patterns we need for our feature. Now we can generate YAML file. So this YAML file contains everything we need, abuse cases, use cases, uh, test scenarios, etc. We also can enrich this document and add more information like severity because the same template or same thread uh, might produce the different criticality in different flows. So now we can set the severity for this specific flow. And we also can add the pointer, uh, as you can see, CWE521 is the pointers to known uh, risk databases or vulnerability databases. Just keep it in mind, I will show you how we can use it later. So now we have patterns, uh, we generated YAML file, we can store it as a, in a code repository. Now we can start automate security activities in our pipeline. For example, we can introduce risk-based security test orchestration. So what the idea? Um, we can implement uh, orchestration framework. You can use open source. You can uh, use commercial tool. It's up to you. So this uh, orchestration tool, uh, we will provide the, our YAML file as an input. So orchestrator will set up an environment and run all the tests we have in our YAML file and produce reports. So uh, in addition, we can into, uh, introduce the continuous feedback and continuous optimization flow here. So just, for example, 
if we have new, f new issue found in one of the tests, we can automatically update our YAML file and send an email, for example, to our security specialist and say, okay, we have the new issue. Uh, it's not in your YAML file. We're going to update, we're going to add new pattern. So please review. But in most cases, we don't need human intervention in this process. So just an example of how to integrate uh, this framework into the pipeline. So uh, during the build stage, for example, we can introduce security test uh, step. And this step will trigger and pull our YAML file from repository and provide it as an input to our orchestration framework. So our orchestrator will uh, set up an environment and run tests and produce reports. So then we can use, we can ask for reports at any gate we have in our pipeline. If you have continuous deployment process, uh, you also can um, use the threat modeling coverage score for uh, take the go, no go decision. So what is that? As you probably know, uh, security test tools provide us the coverage score for different uh, known vulnerability databases or risk databases like OWASP, CWE, GDPR, etc. And uh, remember we had the uh, CWE pointer in our YAML file. So we now can correlate what we have in our YAML file and what we have in report and calculate threat modeling score. Okay, so by the way, it's a screenshot from the real test tool without names. Uh, so, and for example, if we have coverage more than 80% for our threat modeling and we don't have any critical or high risk defects, we can automatically push our code to production. You know, just an example. Okay, so the, uh, just to summarize this approach, so the first of all is the template based. Uh, we need to generate templates for all known flaws in our system. Then we can automate the part of the threat modeling process and shift it to developers. Uh, we also generate YAML file as an output and we can manage versions of this YAML file. We can run this process for every new feature we have as part of feature onboarding process. Uh, but as usual, we have uh, limitations or we call it things to worry about. So the first of all, we don't have any one framework which can cover all the functionality we need. So we have vendors provide us the way to generate and select patterns and we have orchestration frameworks and we have pipeline management system, etc. But we need to bring all these tools together in one place. Yeah, so for example, we need uh, some kind of script which will uh, take all the patterns, selected patterns and generate YAML file and store it to the uh, uh, code storage, for example. It doesn't exist now. Uh, and they have script, uh, we need script to pull YAML file, uh, take the test scenarios and push it to the orchestration framework. It's also something we need to create. As I know, uh, at least two big vendors now working on this, uh, on this scenario. So next year, I hope we will see something. So the next point, um, we don't have any uh, official specification for uh, security automation uh, formats. For example, YAML file formats, JSON file formats, it's up to you for now. It's not spec exists for now, N not official at least specs. Uh, the last point, uh, as I said, in, in some cases we need to run manual threat modeling process for new technology, for new frameworks we have, but the output of this process should be new pattern. Yeah, so the next time someone want to use uh, green database, they just select the answer in the questionnaire. So I'm using, uh, I want to use green database, we automatically select the pattern. So the next time it will be uh, part of the known flaws. So uh, I just put it, uh, two set examples. You can pick your favorite or can, uh, no, you can use different tools. Uh, for example, we have the threat modeler, uh, provides us the way to generate patterns and select patterns based on the uh, design diagram. The same idea, but based on the questionnaire is the Erius risk. We have Orchestron as open source for orchestration frameworks, uh, uh, orchestrator um, uh, processes, the same as the zero knot. Uh, and we have Security Compass, uh, Jira as the, as the code repository, et cetera, et cetera. So you can review it, uh, this, uh, this list and uh, select your, your favorite product. Okay, so. 
I hope it was likely, <laughs> at least for now. So thank you very much. If you have questions, so you're welcome to ask. Yeah. Yes, thanks for the talk. Uh, you said there are some vendors that are going to uh, working on this. So yes. Can you tell us who? Sorry. Can you tell us which vendors? Uh, I cannot name vendors for now, but let's take it offline. Okay. The other the other question is: Are you going to open source some of this, or is Citibank going to open source some of this? Uh, uh, I cannot provide you information about what we use in in Citibank. Yeah, so you can you can use open source. You can use open source. Orchestron is a very good open source. For example, that uh, one of the open source is the uh, Thread Playbook. They provide the uh, specification for YAML files and uh, automation for security tests based on these YAML files. One of my favorites for now. So yes, we can, uh, we we have our open source system. Any questions? How is the acceptance of the developers since they have additional effort? Um, effort for sorry, effort for what? Um, to do the uh, threat modeling. So you have two parts. The part number one is the patterns generation. It's an effort now, but uh, it's still on the security specialist. We need to generate uh, patterns, security patterns, threats, or we can use uh, libraries, existing libraries. Even Microsoft provides you free, li it's not open source, but it's free library for, uh, for threats, threats pattern. Uh, so, and this is still under the security specialist, but the pattern selection, we just provide the question menu to our developers, and we ask design questions. So for example, uh, uh, are you using, uh, do you use uh, JBoss? Yes. Okay. What kind of version of JBoss you use? That's enough for us. Okay. So that we, we don't ask about the okay, do you have the specific encryption and not. So we, we ask design questions only. So then we can move it to developers. They don't need they don't should be a security expert for to do that. So we're just asking the design questions, plain design questions. But we can understand from from the answers what kind of patterns we should select. Yeah. The patterns you're creating for JBoss or Spring or whatever yeah. it happens to be, are you, is there any way you could open source those? Because I think that open probably- Open source? Yes. Uh, or, or publish them somehow, because I think that's probably something other companies would like. Yes. Uh, wink, wink. Yes, uh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have chat ops. So uh, I, I know, so it's not in the city, uh, but I know that one of the companies, they use uh, chat ops in order to generate questions, and then they provide the flow. So the answer generate the next question, the next question, the next question. So they have predefined the questions for the chat ops. Uh, or chatbot, yes, it, but it, we call it chat ops because it's chat operations based, yes, not, not the chatbot. Uh, but uh, so m my favorite is Iri Irios Risk for this one. Okay. But, but those patterns you're, you're not going to be able to publish. Yeah. No, I, sorry? You I won't be able to publish those, the patterns you've created for Irios Risk. For Irios Risk, publish uh, patterns? <coughs> yeah. So when you're. Well, yeah. <laughs> when you're. Creating those patterns in areas risk, could you publish those? Ah, uh, publicly. I don't know. I need to check it. Because mm. I imagine maybe other yes. companies maybe do yes. the same I, thing. I know we have. I know we can generate. The problem is, uh, as I said, the problem is uh, the formats because the, for example, this vendor they provide the JSON format. For example, the the second vendor they are using XML. So I need some help to it. So okay, I can ex export all the questionnaire, for example, for specific patterns, etc. But I cannot use it in diff this kind of no, in the <laughs> second application because it's different format, and we don't have spec. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? 
Yeah, thank you very much. No problem. Have a great day. Thank you very much.